Hello everybody, we're continuing our series in favourite things and today I want to talk about a favourite text that's uh, motivating and challenging and it's found in Daniel 3 verses 15, 16, 17, around about there. So let me just read it to you and uh, then we'll crack on. So Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, these three people with Daniel, exiled to Babylon, they're challenged by the king and they reply, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and, um, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Wow, quite a, uh, an assertive statement by these, these people, Daniel and his friends. So if you're familiar with Daniel, you'll understand why they said that in what context. If you're not familiar with the story, let me just give you the backstory. So it starts with the exile of Judah, the southern kingdom. Daniel is amongst the first wave of uh, exiles to go to Babylon just before 600 BC, around about there. And Babylon, of course, is just south of Iraq, present day Iraq in Baghdad. And why were they exiled? Well, they were disobedient and God wasn't happy, um, not necessarily with Daniel and his friends, but uh, they were caught up in it. People had turned their back on God and God disciplined them using Babylon to do it. And Habakkuk the prophet has a few things to say about that. He complains, hang on a minute, why uh, discipline uh, disobedient people with an even worse disobedient people? You can't see the justice in that. More about that later. But Daniel and his three friends, Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego, are young, probably teenagers, and they are chosen to serve in the court of the king. But they're regarded as young enough to be kind of teachable and clearly... Uh, very able and smart kids. They will induct them in the, the ways of Babylonian culture and it'll take about three years to kind of indoctrinate them, they hope. And, um, you know, this, this period just before adulthood is a very kind of tender time, isn't it? And they're hoping that they'll be able to kind of affect their sense of who they are and their identity. They changed their names from Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah that had godly definitions of their names. So it's Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego, or a bungalow, as I like to say sometimes. And Daniel knows what the Babylonians are up to, realises that their main task is to remain true to themselves, remain true to God, and uncontaminated by this Babylonian culture that surrounds them. And they begin by only eating clean food in the Jewish culture. We don't have the equivalent of clean food and unclean food, but let me just, uh, just take the opportunity to talk about what is unclean in our culture you know, bad films or, or, or books that might kind of corrupt our thinking. Um, even the company that we keep, the things we look at on our, com on our computer. We have to be careful about the influences, you know, that we allow onto ourselves, that they make sure they're not negative influences, keeping them godly and positive. And for Daniel and us, there's pressure sometimes, isn't there, to let go of who you are and, and to kind of the, drop the standards you live by and take a different route. Um, and for them, it was one that challenged their very identity. We have to ask, have the teachings of the Bible and what we've learned of God so far um, made it enough of a difference to us to protect us when the pressure's really on? Because the pressure is about to, to come on to these guys. But in chapter one and two, everything's okay. So far, so good. And then chapter three, the pressure is on. King Nebuchadnezzar, very unpredictable. True to form, he, he builds a massive, whopping 90-foot gold statue, an idol, and demands that everybody worship this, this idol and bow down to it. Otherwise, be thrown into the burning furnace, fiery furnace. Of course, Daniel and his friends refuse to bow down to the idol. Nebuchadnezzar says, well, what God will I be able to rescue you from my hand? And their reply is our chosen text. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, our God can deliver us and he will deliver us from your hand, O Majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know, Majesty, we will not serve your gods or the image of gold you set up. Wow. And why does that kind of motivate me so much and challenge me? It's because they were so resolute in their trust of God. It didn't depend on being saved from the fire even. It didn't depend on their circumstances, anything external. It only depended 
on their trust and their faith in what they knew of God. They trusted their God. Changing their name wasn't about to change that. It really had made a difference. They, they, were, they knew who they were in God. As I apply that to my life, it kind of encourages me and it challenges me to have the same sort of resolute faith. And it was a place I noticed that Habakkuk eventually came to after his complaint in chapter 3 of Habakkuk, verses 17 and 19. He says these amazing words, Though the fig tree does not bud, and though there are no grapes on the vine, no olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, there's no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. Why? Because his faith in God did not depend on his circumstances. Eventually, he got into that place. It depended on his relationship with God. He got himself in a place where he could trust God no matter what. And that really challenges me. That's a wonderful thing to be able to do, isn't it? How do you get to that place? It can only by, be by drawing near to God every single day, getting to know him. So that our lives depend on relationship, not on our circumstances. That's where I want to be in my faith every day. I can't say I'm there every day, but uh, that's my aim to be there every day. And famously, of course, Daniel and his friends do end up in the fiery furnace. But miraculously, someone like the Son of God appears, the scripture says. Some believe it's Jesus himself, appears in the flames with them. And miraculously and amazingly, they're not touched by the flames. They're just walking around having a chat. The astrologers, astrologers said in this sort of these chapters, hey, that God does not live among people. <laughs> God proved them wrong there. We serve a God who lives very much with his people. Our God is called Emmanuel, God with us, who through Jesus gave us a way to be united with him. Of course, he, Jesus suffered on the cross, took our sins, so that anyone who calls on his name can be united with God, saved. And we live our lives now in relationship with him. And just to say, if you don't have a relationship with God, hey, you can start that today. Just call on his name. Ask him into your life as your own personal saviour. Oh, that's the phone. <laughs> Amen. Well, God bless. Thank you for listening and bye for now. Bye for now.